Hello everyone and welcome back to another ANSYS tutorial. Today I will be showing you guys how to specify the mechanical properties of different material in ANSYS Workbench. Now this can be extremely useful if you're given a problem statement and the material you're given has either specific mechanical properties or even made up values for mechanical properties. That way you can use ANSYS to solve the problem with the material and get a good result. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is open up the engineering data tab. Now this can be done in two ways. You can either directly do it in the uh, simulation module that you choose from the analysis systems over here. So like we did before, uh, we took explicit dynamics to do our simulation. And the first thing we did was specify which materials we want to get from the engineering data here. And this opened up a tab up here. Or the other way we can do this if we delete this, is if you see down here in component systems, there is a component called engineering data. We can drag that into our project schematic. Now this only gives us the engineering data component of the simulation or analysis systems. And if we double click this, this will also open up the engineering data tab. Now, the first thing that you guys are gonna to wanna to do is press on the filter engineering data button up here in the left-hand corner. The, and make sure that it is not highlighted. You do not want it to be like this. You want to press it so that it is not highlighted. The reason for this is because when it's filtered, it often limits you in what mechanical properties you can choose from the toolbox here. So you want to make sure that when you press on fil filter engineering data so that it is not highlighted. You do not want it to look like this. Now, say that the material I want to add is aluminum 2024T3 that has the mechanical properties over here. It has a tensile strength of 43 megapascals, it has a yield strength of 345 megapascals, and a modulus of elasticity of 73.1 gigapascals. The first thing that we're going to want to do is give the material a name. So we're going to come over here to click to add new material, and we're going to click on this, and we're going to type in the name of our material, 2024 T3. Anywhere, and this adds the material to the list of materials here in engineering data. In order to add a mechanical property, we come to our toolbox here, and you can press the plus on any one of these categories here. We're going to start with density. So press on the plus here in physical properties. What we're going to start with is density. So we're going to drag density and bring it all the way down to where it says property down here until we see the plus sign. You can see if I move this farther up, there is no, it says we cannot add it up here, but we can add it when we get down here with the plus sign. So we bring it down here and it adds it to our column of properties here. Now we can see that column B is yellowed out. Now, when it's yellow, it means that it wants a value from us. So we can specify the value as for the density of 2024 T3 aluminum as 2.78. Now, this would be in grams per cubic centimeter, but we're in kilograms per cubic meter. So this is not good. We need to change the units. And to do this, we will press on the drop down menu here and change it to grams per cubic meter. But be careful, now we see that it already changed the value of the property, but we want 2.78 grams per cubic centimeter. So we're gonna re-specify this. Now say if we wanted to change it to a different value in a different unit, we can do that and ANSYS will automatically change that value for us. So the next mechanical property that we're going to add is the tensile strength. As we see here from the table, the tensile strength of 2024 T3 aluminum is 483 megapascals. So in order to get that property, we're going to press on property here and our toolbox comes back up with all the things that we could possibly need and we have to go find the tensile strength. So since it's strength, it's probably going to be in the strength category over here. So you press the plus and we get tensile ultimate strength down here. So we're going to drag that to property. As we can see here, column B is yellowed out. So we are going to want to add the value, but before we add the value, we're gonna change the units to megapascals, and then we're going to add the value of 483.
Next, we're going to add the yield strength of 2024 T3 aluminum, which happens to be in the same category here. So we're going to drag that in and do the same thing. Now, finally, the last property that we're going to want to add is the Young's modulus or the modulus of elasticity, which is 73.1 gigapascals. In order to do that, we're going to go over here to linear elastic and we're going to choose isotropic elasticity. And we're going to bring this down over here into properties. And as you can see here, it's added the isotropic elasticity and it's added a whole bunch or an array of different uh, mechanical properties that we can add. Depending on what material properties we have, we can adjust the isotropic elasticity to match that. So we come over here, press on the little drop down menu, and we can see we can see here that we can either define the Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio or we can define shear modulus and Poisson's ratio. And you can see here that the uh, grayed out boxes change and the highlighted boxes change. So the highlighted boxes are the ones that we need to specify. Or we, if we had the bulk, bulk modulus and the Poisson's ratio, we could define those ones instead. For the time being, I have Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. So we're gonna go over here. We're gonna change the units to gigapascals. In the list, doesn't have gigapascals, so the closest one will be megapascals, and we'll add 73100, and we're going to define a Poisson's ratio of 0 0.33. And as you can see, as we added the Young's modulus here and the Poisson's ratio, the bulk modulus and the shear modulus were automatically calculated by the ANSYS program, so that is pretty cool. And there you go, we inputted all the mechanical properties that I was given in this table here. And now we can press on the project tab and continue on with our simulation by making our geometry and then going into mechanical and specifying our boundary conditions. Now, one thing that you may want to know is that for this particular simulation, I specified the engineering data or the materials in a standalone component of the system. So with what I currently have, there is no geometry. I cannot continue on a simulation. So did I input all this information for nothing? And the answer is no. So what we can do now is we can take our one of our analysis systems, say explicit dynamics like we did last time. We drag it over here beside the engineering data that we have. And now if we drag engineering data to the engineering data in this explicit dynamics module, we can share the data between these two components here. And so if we go into engineering data, we can see that the tab here has A2 and B2, A, A2 here and B2 here, and they both contain the 2024 T3 aluminum. Whereas, for example, if I bring over another explicit dynamics and I do not connect the two and I double click on engineering data, this will open a new tab C2. And as you can see, it does not have our specified aluminum 2024 T3 material that we added. And there you go. That is the end of this tutorial of how to specify specific mechanical properties for different materials in ANSYS Workbench. Hope you guys enjoyed.